Hello SOLIDWORKS Power Users, this is Alin Vergato from Trimax Solutions and welcome to a tech tip about auto tracing pictures in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, you can see here I created a puzzle of um, Canada and United States. Um, started just with the Canadian provinces right now, later on I'm going to work on the United States. And uh, as you can imagine, the shapes that you see here are coming from a picture. I downloaded a map and I uh, trace around this. Also, you can see this maple leaf in here. So um, the question is, how can you do that the fastest way possible, right? You can see it again over there. Um, otherwise, this thing went pretty well. Uh, the second iteration is going to be even better once we add the states of, of the United States, right? So, so it's going to be pretty good. Now, let's focus on tracing because that can be a very, very time-consuming operation. Fortunately, if you have SOLIDWORKS, a professional or premium, you have access to auto trace. And back in 2014, my colleague uh, Jim Peltier wrote an amazing blog, including a video, about the best practices for using auto tracing. But notice there are issues with the tool if you just use it the way it is out of the box. Uh, so as I was working on my puzzle, I was able to find a very interesting technique that will make auto tracing more precise. So I have already a picture of a more complex maple leaf than the one that uh, Jim worked with. Let's see if we can trace this precisely. And let's imagine what we're looking for. It's a pretty small maple leaf, maybe about, let's say, uh, two centimeters. Okay, so we need to be very precise on that. Um, let's put it on the top plane and let's start the sketch picture command. Uh, if you need to learn more about how to use uh, such tools, uh, just um, join us in the surface modeling class or advanced part modeling class. So right now I'm simply inserting the picture in SOLIDWORKS. Once you insert it, the bottom left corner of the pictures actually lay, uh, jumps directly to the origin. Um, we mentioned the fact that maybe the height of the picture is going to be, let's say, three centimeters, right? So I really like this. Um, scale tool that we have in SOLIDWORKS because what's important for me is not to define the, the height of the background but to define the height of my visible area of the picture. And notice I, I didn't try to uh, make this picture perfect, right? So what do you, do you want? Um, what do we want? 30 millimeter, right? So 3 centimeters. So the moment we do that, the picture gets scaled and it's, it's a small picture. Beautiful. Now, auto trace works if you turn on the add-ins, the add-in called auto trace. As I mentioned, you have to have SOLIDWORKS Professional or Premium for that. Uh, the way it works, once you double click on the sketch picture, you go back to its property manager, but now you're getting an extra dialog. So let's click on this arrow and let's pick a color from here to begin tracing. And you can see the result. It's, it's really, really ugly. You can try to work with the color tolerance. You might get something a bit better. Uh, recognition tolerance, right? So you can see here options that might make this a tiny bit better, but it's awful, right? Uh, and one thing I uh, found out after a bit of research is that the quality of the recognition is highly dependent on the size of the picture. So if you have something really, really small, for some re reason, whoever coded this, it was unable to create small splines or small lines or small arcs. So what we're going to do instead, let's scale this picture quite a bit. This time I don't need the scale tool. I know the, the height that I want. I'm simply going to make, uh, I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and I'm going to make this, let's say, 100 times bigger. So I'm going to go to 2.4 meters in one direction. So you can see now it's much, much bigger. Wow, this is huge. Uh, much bigger than what I need. But let's see what we're going to do next. So next, Try again to pick the color, begin tracing. Oh, this is better, much, much better. So let's try to play with these options until we find something that makes sense. And I'm gonna say this looks pretty good. Look at that, this is pretty nice. Now it doesn't mean that all these are gonna work if you have intersections and things like that, but this is this is very close to what I'm looking for. Let's Let's play with this a bit more. Right, so recognition tolerance, the more you go to the left, the, the closer it goes, but you might get this type of artifacts. So try to find, try to find the, the location where this starts to make sense. 
Um, also, of course, if you take the time to prepare the picture as Jim described in his article, that would be even better to so get maximum contrast, maybe a contrast, maybe even make it black and white. But I think this is going to look pretty good on my object. So that's my picture. Um, I think I traced it. Did I? Oh, I, yes, I did. So let's hide the actual picture and take a look at the sketch. Uh, and you can see there are a couple of things missing here. No problem. I'm going to edit the sketch. And uh, let's say I'm going to add one more spline between this and, and this. Right? And um, maybe apply a little tangency here to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, maybe delete this, lay, uh, this uh, point, get them together. Get something a bit more pointy. Uh, notice here some issues, some artifacts. You can clean them yourself. Uh, and then get, uh, get the job done. So uh, this one, it's a spline, right? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm tempted to leave it like that. If you need to, to play with it a bit more, you can later on. Uh, and you can see a few other artifacts. So you, you, can, you can obviously clean this up. Uh, let's take a look if this closes uh, contour, and it does, right? So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm simply going to go and turn this into a solid. So extrude it a tiny bit. Let's say I already know that I need about a centimeter thickness, or let's say half a centimeter. Right, so uh, five millimeter. Now, remember, this is a hundred times bigger than what I need. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scale my um, part. I, in this case, I didn't really position it properly on the origin, so I don't really care um, what I'm scaling about. Let's go by centroid, and I'm gonna go 0 0.01 in scale. So whenever you cannot really offset things, scaling is the way to go. And now I have my sketch. As you can imagine, I can go here, I can run convert entities, click OK, and maybe delete or hide this body. And what I have is the sketch that I was looking for. So the takeaway is make sure you have auto trace available. Uh, if the, even if you did the best job on prepare the, preparing the picture by having the right contrast and the right colors and things like that doesn't give you what you're looking for, simply scale the picture up by a big factor. 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, depending on, on the size that you need in the end. Uh, really run auto trace. Maybe go in there and clean little things. And then extrude, create a, create a body. Uh, that allows you to scale it back and then simply convert the entities. So you can see something like that can save you hours and hours and hours. So when I was doing my puzzle, I, I have so many states in front of me for United States and I already uh, solved quite a lot of problems with uh, Canadian provinces. This saved me days of work. Hope this is gonna help you also as, you, as you're gonna embark on your reverse engineering projects. Thank you.